All right. So what were some of the strategies? What, what, did, what did we find? Let's talk about it a bit. So for me, um, what worked for me is um, I made a count object. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. First, I checked to see whether or not, um, you know, like how many times, like which element appeared inside of like, you know, the array, whether or not it was like existing in the count, right? And um, then I did a object dot keys so I can save, um, you know, save like a like an array full of those keys, you know. And then I check to see how many of those, um, what 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 the value were for those keys, and if it was two or above, I updated a pairs variable and I returned that at the end. Okay. So and how did you update it? So if there had been five of one count. How did you know to add? I, I, could, I could share my screen if, you, if that's yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Throw it up there. All right. Let me just here. So can you guys um, see? Yes. So okay. we've got a count. Pairs. OK. So, yeah. yeah. Does, uh, this, does this work if you were to do um, another two, like a two and a two in your array? Uh, like another one? Let's see. Let's yeah, so we'll have another pair of the sock two. Like that, right here? Yeah. Let's so see. we should have three pairs now. But, oh, uh, so that's it. So it doesn't, it doesn't work for that. So we're close. I like that. Who, who can see, who can see maybe a way to improve Marvin's solution? That. Um, maybe in the in the if condition on line forty eight. On line forty eight. No, 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 no. I'm lying. Forget it. I was just thinking like maybe you could have like a more than two, but not more than three. Oh, you mean like on line forty, like here? Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, no, I think Henry's kind of on the right track but we don't care if it's not more than three because then we would have to because we don't know how many like we can't do an if else statement for every even number in the world right right is there a different thing we could look at maybe a small bit of math like if i said to you I'm i had eight of one here. sock how many pairs would that be four okay well how did you do that divided division Okay. Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, so pretty much it literally would be like I can just I can just add to this conditional statement and maybe add some division there. Well, I don't uh, think you would want to add to the condition. I would want to um, add to what happens here, um, and divide divide like if that yeah. So if it's like more than two or, or more above, then I can like divide it by. Maybe the number of appearances, maybe. Um, well, do we even need a condition? Hang on, let me let me take the screen back, and yeah. then we'll walk through until we get to this part. Okay. All right. So, um, just because we're already in the heat of the problem, right? So the idea is, and let me add another two here, just for fun. So we'll have the same situation as Marvin, right? So. We got to go through, we're giving this array of socks and each sock is represented by a number, right? It could be really anything though. And we're trying to find the total number of complete pairs. So what Marvin suggests is we have a counter object where we look and we go, okay, well, one occurs once, two, two once, four once, two twice, four twice, two, three times, two, four times. So we should be left with this object that looks like one of one, two of four, um, four of two, right? So in our human brains, how many pairs is this? Who can tell me? Seven pairs? Three pairs. Um, so there's seven socks, but a, a pair implies two of things, right? 
Yeah, it's got to be three. So, yeah. Right, mate? Yeah, if three. I, if okay. I wrote it like this, it might be easier. Two pairs. Or no, two has four. Uh, two I didn't mean to do green like that. Sorry, one. Maybe this is easier to look at it like this, right? It's the same logic. So how many pairs of socks is this? Three. You have, you have three pairs. Three. Okay. So we a red remaining. This is three pairs. What about if I did that? How many pairs of socks do we have now? So three. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Four. Okay. Two, four. Four. Okay, so how are we doing that? How are we doing that? that computation in our minds. We're dividing the number um, by two, like the value. Uh, module two, you know? Well, modding two would just give you one or zero. Because that's the remainder. So we're but, just if you're, if, Henry, So I don't think you're modding, Henry, because you would say one mod two is well, that's a remainder of one. So you would be counting this as one pair of socks. Probably not. Two, four mod two would be zero pairs of socks. So I don't think we want a mod. Like a res regular division? Regular division. So one divided by two is what? Zero. Zero, yeah, integer division. Two divided by, four divided by two is what? Two. Two. two and five divided by two integer division is what? Remainder one. Two. 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 Yeah, but integer division doesn't give you remainders. So. Two point five. So if that's the case, we can just add whatever our number of socks is divided by two. So let's go ahead and try something like that. So let's call a sock count. It takes in an array. And we need to create a counter object is what we're doing first. So let's go ahead and just build that const counter, which takes in an array. And we'll just return our array dot reduce uh, our accumulator, right? Our current element. We should definitely get comfortable with reduce. Uh, and this is going to be a start as an object. And then we can just say like, hey, if um, if accumulator at current element, so if that exists, then we can say accumulator at current element, and we can increment that by one. Otherwise, accumulator at current element is equal to one. Return our accumulator, right? This is going to keep returning that object. So let's just do a quick check to make sure that works so we'll say counter at array let's go ahead and take this array uh, this is no longer relevant just so you know the numbers are wrong and so we'll call sock count on our array and let's see note at warm up and we are getting one occurring one time two occurring four times and four occurring two times. So this is working. Our counter ob, our quick counter helper function is working. So let's go ahead and save those. So we'll say let our const counts is equal to counter of array. Okay. So now we've got all these counts and counter. so, sorry. Oh, thank you. Counter. Uh, okay, so once we've got all these counts, right, we'll, we're left with an object somewhat similar to this. And so we said, well, we can just go through its values and add a count to its two. So let's say let pairs is equal to zero. So I could do object.values here and pass in our counts. And then I could say uh, for each count, I could just say pairs plus equals math.floor of k 
count divide by two. Return pairs. Right? That's all we really have to do. Let's just make sure that this works. Console.log. And we should be left with three, All right? So this works. Uh, if we didn't want to write it like this, right? We could have just done a for in loop, where we would say let uh, key in counts, or maybe I'll call this count. Uh, no, I'll call it sock as the key. And then I could say pairs plus equals math dot floor of counts at sock divide by two, right? This would do the exact same thing. It's just maybe not quite as clean looking, but it's not, it's not really bad or anything. Uh, any questions on this way of solving it? So it's just like counter object, grab the values, and then just, just divide, you know, like you grab the keys and then like divide, like, right, yeah, you just divide the value by, by two, pretty much. That's all you're doing. Yep. Okay. So we don't really care. If, I mean, we can do like if it, if it's greater than two or, but the fact is, is if we just have one sock or is like, because we can't have zero socks, it wouldn't have made it into the counter, right? So the option is just one, but one divided by two an integer division is always going to be zero. Yeah. Right. Just a reminder, integer, integer division is without just math without the remainders, essentially with division. And there are different languages that are set up that way. I don't know about Python, but I can tell you that Ruby, all of division is integer division. So you don't have to do math.floor. If you, you have to do something different, if you want it to have a float number or like with decimals, you have to specify that, uh, otherwise it does integer division. So yeah, the way you write this in Ruby is even really slick. Uh, you also don't need this because it automatic, you can set it up so that it defaults to zero no matter what. Anyway, I'll teach you Ruby some other time. Uh, any other questions on this? Oops. Yeah, I have a question, Corey. Sure. If you wanna get like odd numbers, is that like a pair? What do you mean by if I want to get odd numbers? Uh, because this is like we're getting like uh, the pairs. Like if we want to get like, for example, like the count of one, everything like it's odd is not a pair. Right. So you were so you're saying like, you want all the loose socks? Yes. Because I want to just like understand how we're going to change the divide by two because I know like when you divide by two equal to zero, so basically it's going to be a pair. So how about the yeah. loose one? Okay, so let's do that. Let's let's call this loose socks. Does anybody have an idea before I go into it? How how could we find the loose socks? So the socks without pairs. I'll, I'll say socks without pairs. What do we think? We we'll just do modular instead. Okay, that would exactly. Give us modular, yeah. Okay. Very good, Marvin. Right? If we just we change these to uh, to loose, right? And then instead of doing divide, we're gonna do modulo. We would just do modulo exactly. So in this scenario, we have just uh, one loose sock, right? Is that it? Yeah. All right, let me add another two so that we have two loose socks. Uh, and we'll call our sock without pairs. And we get our two. Great question, right? It's, it's always good to push yourself to find like how we could what we would have to do to tweak things just a little bit, right? Because at the basis, this problem is just a counter object. Like, there's hundreds of problems like this. They're all very much the same. And if you feel really comfortable with counter objects and 
pulling information out of them, they're all really easy once you get comfortable with that same pattern and you can tweak it. Uh, same like if I asked you for the second most common character in a string, right? Boom, counter object and iterating through it and just keeping track of the first and second. Uh, okay, let's, can anyone else think of a different way to solve our saw count problem without using a counter object? Any ideas? I'll just get it ready. Any ideas? Hmm. Without a counter object. Corby, I um I started to sort. I didn't finish it, so I can't really elaborate like how you know okay. it would end, but I think I started I started with a, a sort and I thought about a loop and possibly an if statement, but I didn't finish the um Okay. I didn't finish the problem. The sorting implementation. That could be interesting. I'm not sure if I totally see it yet, but that's kind of cool. Uh, what's, the, what's the time complexity of sorting? Just so we can think about that. Uh, isn't it uh, li link, uh, log n? N, n log n? N log n. It's n yeah, log n log n. That's what I meant. Because I was going to yeah. say k log n, k log k. But I think you're looking for went... li linear rhythmic there. Yeah. But yeah, right. Uh, this is, yeah, so sorting is n log n. What is the time complexity of our sock count here? Um, o of n. Okay. Linear, right? This is linear. This is linear, O of n, yeah. Danny, can you tell me why? Um, it's O of n because if the array, the amount of values in the array gets larger, um, we have to count it. So the, the output gets larger or the output is dependent on that. Let me rephrase that. The output is dependent on the array. Um, kind of, I mean, we, it's it's because for every added element we have to look at one more element we have to look at every single one thing more step, yeah. right so what's the time complexity of counter here who can tell me this one what's our time complexity of counter that's that's still o of n still o of n okay i agree What's our space complexity for counter? It's linear. It's Sorry? Constant. It's constant. Uh, space complexity is not constant on this one. On the, oh, the counter? In here, it would grow as the counter. whatever you insert grows. Exactly, right? Because if I, if I have an array of 10 different elements, I'm going to have to hold 10 different elements. If I have an array of a thousand different elements, I'll be holding a thousand different elements, right? So our counter is also uh, O of N for space. All right, so this is linear time, linear space. Uh, and SOC count also is linear time, linear space. Even though our counter is linear, and you could argue that this is also linear. Right? So this is kind of 2n, but that becomes n in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so what if I didn't want 2n, right? What if I, I didn't, even though it's technically the same time complexity of O of n, but I didn't want this, I didn't want to do this extra loop. Any ideas? I still want the time complexity to be n. I don't want to do an extra loop. 
Space complexity can still be n as well. Any other data structures that come to mind to help us? I heard the word set. Marvin, tell me any idea how, can, do you have an idea how that could help us? Um, well, um, I think I said, um, keeps track of um, what you need to whatever you build. Um, yeah. I'm, 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 man, I had the idea and I'm losing it. Um, <laughs> um, That's we can, okay. Yeah, we can make a, yeah, cause that, that would probably help us more, actually even, it would probably make it even faster than just like, like counter object making that. Um, it's a little hard to hear you, Marvin. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my voice. It's all right. No, I know. I'm just letting you know. If I'm not answering correctly to what you're saying. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's walk through this. So let's say we were had the set. And I looked at one here. I could check if it's in my set. I go, it's not. So I'm going to add it. Then I have a two here. And I check if this is in my set. It's not. So I'm going to add it. Four. I check four, four is not in my set, so I'm gonna add it. Then I have a two. So what do I know right now? What does this mean? That means that you've seen two is, two is this in your set, and there's also, um, if you, yeah. If you have a second two, that means you added. have a pair. It means I have a pair, right? Yeah. So if I have a pair here, now my pairs can be one. Uh -huh. Should I, what, do, what should I do? I, I've seen a pair. What could I do? Oh, sorry. I'm on this one, right? Yeah. Wait, can you repeat that? What you said again? So I've hit this. I've hit mm -hmm. the second two. I've incremented my pair count. Is there anything else I should do? Uh, you should have a, a well, you already have the pair counter. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe we'll keep moving and we'll see Yay. what could happen. Yeah. All right. So now I have a four. Yeah. Right. We're gonna increment two. Two. But then I have another two. Is this? Should we add another pair? Not quite. Oh. No. So what should I have done when I was at our first, our second two that I hit? Set a conditional. Oh. Set a conditional. Count should be zero. You you reset the count. I don't want to reset our count. I still want this pair. I'm not talking about that pair. Like when you, for example, when you get a pair of two, yeah, and then you have to reset that the count for the number two. That's what I mean. Reset meaning remove it from the set. No, just like uh, change it to the, to zero. Change what to change this number to zero. It's like checking number. Uh, it's not like checking uh, a number two. <laughs> right. I, um, I, I think I don't you should delete it. it. Okay. Just well, what if I had remo yeah. What did you say, Doug? Just, just delete it. I could just delete it, right? And so then I would have this two, and we would stick in our two now. Oh, and this four should be deleted at this point because we've already reached our four. We see another two. This would become three. This would get deleted. And then I would see this two and I would add it in. And then we would be finished and we'd have three pairs. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of cool. So let's try this. So let's go ahead and say our const and we'll say our set and we'll just make a new set. Let's have our const pairs. We'll start that as zero. And then we can just iterate through our socks that for each sock. And then I can say, um, if our set that has the sock, I want our pairs to go up by one and I want to remove it from our set. Else we can just go ahead and add it to our set. Set dot add the sock. Right? And then at the very end of this, we can just return our pairs. And if we do that, we don't have to do that extra loop. And it's still going to work for us. Oh, well, I have had, had some bug. Um, what doesn't it like? 
Assignment to constant variable. Ah, has to be this, let. This still is linear though. Yeah, this is still linear, but I'm not doing a second loop. So this should behave slightly faster than this because this one does one loop per counter and then it's looping through all the keys here. Okay. This is only looping one time. So, one from two ends there. so this is a slight, slight improvement. Um, not that there's anything wrong with this other way. It's just good to know, be able to think of different ways to solve the same problem. That's important. All right. Any questions on this one? All right. On that note, I will stop the recording.